Okay, me again. Uh, I wanted to update because I found a few things out after I did my original review because I played with some things a little bit more. There were a few things that I didn't care for that I didn't do as thoroughly, believe it or not, as I would have liked. In particular, I wanted to get a, uh, a measurement for what the actual mag was, at least as best as I can. It's easiest to measure the digital because then I can take a, a picture and then compare that to the actual links of things that I look at. Uh, from what I've seen, there are two settings. There's low and there's high on the scope. And uh, right now I'm recording this, the input from the scope. I had to reduce the resolution down to uh, VGA 640 by 480. So it's not going to look as good as the images do. They can go up to 2 megapixels, but I have to do that in order to record. And I'm going to try and combine these like I've done with a couple of other reviews that I've done in the past. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes. So I did a measurement of the, the digital power where you actually have the CCD camera, this little guy here, in. And I'm going to put that back in. On the low setting, he gets about 35 times is what I measured, 35 times magnification. And the high setting has about 220 is what I measured. And so that was one measurement. I'd like to measure a bunch of them before I could give you a solid number to quote, but it's going to be in the ballpark of that. On the optical, where I take out the CCD and replace it with a little eyepiece that comes with it, it's actually somewhere in between. It's definitely better than the low setting digital, but it's not as good as the high setting digital. And so I would estimate it, and I did a rough comparison as best I could, and I get somewhere, I would quote, in between 60 times and up to 95. 95 is actually the hand wavy measurement that I actually got. Uh, when looking into it, you have a total field of view of about 130 thousandths of an inch, or mil, if you're used to that. Uh, so it's a very tiny, it, it's very good. It definitely beats out the jeweler's loops that I've shown in some of uh, my images. I didn't think to actually grab any of those and set them aside, unfortunately. But So the eyepiece, I've gotten to work a lot better. Now, one of the big things is I found out this plastic collar when I was looking at LCD screens, because it's one thing that I really enjoy looking at with them. Uh, I had a trouble focusing on it on high. Well, it turns out the way that this is designed is there's a focal point that's just a little bit below this, uh, this plastic collar. And so if you've got something that you're, you're looking through thick slides or something that's a decent way away from that, you may not be able to bring it into focus. I actually fixed that by taking 80 grit sandpaper and just kind of sanding away some of this, including the part of the bottom here. You've got a little bit of leeway. Uh, so it's kind of a design flaw, at least it seems to be with mine, and that might explain some of the troubles other people had with theirs. Beyond that, I can't really advise anything else, uh, but it's an easy enough fix, and this is a pretty decent scope uh, despite that. Uh, I've also played a little bit with some of the, the stage ones, and I don't actually like them near as much as this, and I'll explain that here in just a moment. I've actually got some, uh, some items that I'm going to show you with this video that I'm trying to link up. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got this piece of paper, and I'll be using it soon with this scope, actually, to teach microscopy to some kids. But uh, right here, this is 8-point uh, font, and then down here, we're going to be looking at this really, really tiny one. I'm not certain you can even see it, and probably not with that backlighting. But uh, I took a screen capture of the 8-point font and then dropped it down to 30% of its original size. It's very tiny, so you've got to squint at it to see it. But we're going to start off with that. And so I'm going to set this on here, and I need to turn on the LED, brighten it up. And with the video, I've got to play with it some because it won't automatically adjust the uh, the exposure like the vid or the pictures will. You can see I'm bringing this into focus, and I may have to yeah I'm cycling through. There we go. So that's pretty good focus there. And you can see it's just the first few letters of the alphabet, and there's the really really tiny script kind of in the middle there, A, B, C, D. You can see all the way up to G there, and that's the really tiny one. Now I'm going to zoom in to high, and I'm going to need to turn up the light a little bit. And there, and especially this close, you can see what appears to be fine lines, particularly in the bigger font, is actually little dots here and there. And so that one I thought was really neat. I'm going to set this aside. I've got a number of things that I'm going to show you hopefully in this video. I apologize for the quality, but this is a piece of uh, denim that I cut out of some jeans. I'm going to bring this back to the low setting and set this just on top. And I'm just adjusting the little the slider here because I'm more comfortable with that, as you can see. And here's focus on the low setting. And here's me zooming in. Here's focus on the high setting. And you can see all the little threads that make up 
the denim that I've got here. Um, someone had mentioned that they were looking at coins, so I've got myself a coin, and th this should have worked even before I fixed the stuff, but I don't know. Um, this is Olympic a Park of some kind, I believe, in Washington. And so this is one of the uh, state quarter series, but this was after they finished all the states and they've added other stuff. Now there's a lot of glare on that. Let me turn down the LED some. And you can see I've got it kind of upside down here, but there's a large horned animal. And I can rock through focus, try and get good focus. We're going to zoom in to high. And you can see pretty good detail on that. I don't know how well it's going to transfer over to Amazon, but you can see I can pick this up and keep it fairly close and move it around, and that's that's still pretty easy. A little bit of it may come out of focus, so I keep my hand ready to try and bring it back into focus, but it's usually best to try and get it centered on what you're looking at and then just set it down and then adjust focus. So that's the quarter there. Uh, real quick, I've got myself a 1943 steel penny. These guys are fun. Um, and so I'm going to zoom back down to the low setting, and there is Abraham Lincoln. And he's seen better days, but this is a very old coin comparatively. So I'm going to zoom back in, and then you can see kind of the surface of it. And it's, it's not fared well comparatively over the test of time. Steel isn't that ro Well, I guess it's fairly robust. But And here are his lips and part of his beard. And so you can see we can zoom in pretty well on this. Uh, next thing that I have is a ruler, and we're going to look over here, which is the big ones are centimeters and the small ones are millimeters. We're going to look at that, zooming down to low. Here's low setting, pretty well in focus. And then I'm going to zoom in. I may need to turn up the light on this some. Ooh. you got to be a little careful. You can rock back and forth through focus, but that should be pretty good focus there. I'm going to move around, and there is six, six centimeters. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Uh, one of the other things, I like my hat. It's uh, kind of like a fedora, but it's made of feather felt wool, feather felt wool, 100%. So let's take a look at what it looks like close up. And here's the low setting. You can see all the little fibers in the wool. I'm going to zoom in. And here's the high setting. Let me turn up the light some, but the exposure, uh, this is about as best as I'm going to get. But you can see all the little fibers that make up my hat, and I'm going to zoom back down to low. The final thing that I want to show is, this is my tablet, and uh, I'm going to take a look at the pixels that comprise the screen. And so I'm going to kill the light here, because we just want the light from the pixels. And so here's the low end. Let me get it in focus. There we go. That's pretty good focus as far as I can tell. You've got blue, green, and red in each pixel. And they work together to generate all the colors that you can see. Right now I'm in the white, so you can see all of them lit up. And so now I'm going to move over to where I've got some text written. This is the word much. And so in particular I'm going to try and focus on uh, the period and the cursor, the blinking cursor, which is neat. I'm going to zoom in. Here we go, and that's pretty good focus. Now to get this, I actually had to sand off part of the bottom, like I said, because the, the pixels are a couple layers down in this tablet. And so, and you can see the cursor, the pixels lighting up, and then shutting down for the cursor. And to get all the different colors that you see in the pixels, they'll just light up the, if it's something blue, they'll just have the blue lit up. And the red and the green will be off, and so they mix colors to make everything that we see there. And this is actually one of the things I really like about having this non-stage microscope, because now I can take this and I'll, I'll put it here on the laptop. And give me a moment to focus. There you go. So I wouldn't really stand a chance of being able to put, say, the HDTV there on a, on a stage to look at it. But with this, I can just pick things up and I can set it wherever. Let me turn the light back on. And I can look at just about anything. And I, I really like that. I've run into limitations before with, with those little stages. What can I put on there? I like to be able to put it on just about anything to look at.